Ooh, I'm gonna trick stab ya. <laughs> okay, so normally I just put some extra gameplay clips here, but if it's alright with y'all, I want to shamelessly rip a page out of Lazy Purple's book and talk a little bit about the behind the scenes stuff. And don't worry, there's still extra clips in here, and I probably won't take too long with this. Anyway, there are a few scrapped jokes and bits that ended up making cameos and all those folder names in the post credit scene. Most of these were just things that KJ and I didn't think were quite funny enough, but some of them got left out because of the structure of the final script. Like, we were originally going to talk about butter knifing a lot lot more, since getting the speed boost on kill instead of on backstab is kind, kind of, of a big, big deal, deal, and is one of the main things setting the big earner apart from the kunai. Like, kunai is probably still better for pubs where you just have tons of free backs to work with, but it's nice that the big earner has something, you know? Get him, get him, get him! <laughs> <laughs> That ain't Falco. <laughs> but yeah, we decided that this would be a really funny thing to mention in the ending stinger for like the shitty demo night gag, but that also meant that we had to leave it out of the script until the very end so that it would be a surprise. Oh my god, you saved it. Oh, I got two butter knives. Shitty demo knife. You saved it. Why am I up here? What? <laughs> What is happening? Quick side note, I still have no idea what the hell even happened in this clip. I get hit by this sticky, but take no damage and instead get blasted up into the skybox. My first thought was the splash damage bug that happens with weird map geometry sometimes, but that makes it so that you don't get hit at all. I get launched here, so I know the sticky registered as hitting me. The game just decided that I take no damage for some reason. Someone better versed in source spaghetti is gonna have to explain this one to me because I, what? And the best part is I just kept going after this happened and this ended up being such a great clip that I used it for the ending stinger. So I think this clip right here is the best possible example of the phrase, we fucking take those. <laughs> anyway, back to butter knives. Had we talked more about it, we probably would have mentioned how speed boosted butter knives synergize surprisingly well with the ambassador and also diamond back to a certain extent. But anyway, a full damage headshot into a butter knife will kill a light class. So you can kind of chain these together in a weird half gun spy duelist playstyle that's totally addicting when you pull it off. Still, using the big earner means that you're gonna get one shot by basically everything, so it's not that practical. Honestly, I think it would be cool as hell if, well, if we ever get new weapons again, spy got like a rapier flintlock combo, kind of like Salt Spire in the Vermintide games. It'd be like an alternate playstyle where you lose out on backstabs, but both weapons crit on a headshot doing like 100 damage or so, and then you charge up the rapier stab for more damage like a huntsman. The flintlock would only have one shot in the clip, but if you get a headshot with the rapier, it immediately reloads your gun. And if you get a headshot with the flintlock, it would give you a buff for the rapier, like maybe like a small speed boost or a second of crits or mini crits or something. It'd be like one of those chaining weapons, like the Titan. Turner, where it incentivizes you to constantly be dueling opponents and swapping between the rapier and gun and ping-ponging between person to person. It, it would probably be totally fucked balance-wise, but it sounds fun as hell, so. Anyway, have you ever gone on a massive tangent? Another thing we wanted to talk about was... Fail stabs. Seeing as how you only have 100 health with a big earner, fail stabs are much more punishing. This was mostly just cut for time, but also just because everything is more punishing with the big earner, so it just felt a little bit redundant. Regardless, I have a ton of fail stab clips because I am very bad at the game and playing spy is pain. No! You are joking! Watch this, Lise. You can actually pinpoint the second when his heart rips in half. And now! No! Speaking of pain, the script itself underwent a ton of revision over the almost two years that KJ and I were working on it. Originally, we were going to have the overarching bit of the video be more centered around the choose your own adventure theme and how that choice comes into play with basically every decision you make as a big earner spot. KJ and Ethan, the characters, would be disagreeing on which paths to take and we'd just constantly be backseat gaming each other on what we were doing wrong. But since we already had a similar conflict in the Beggar's Bazooka video, and if it came into play every single time a decision was made, it would just go on for way too long. and so we decided to rework it. The choice aspect was simplified into two playstyles in their own distinct sections, and instead of another conflict between the creators, the disagreement was now between us and some ambiguous, shadowy corporate overlord that was funding the show. Hello, Sound Smith, when are you going to make The backseat gaming still kind of made it in at the end where KJ starts narrating his own clips, and that served as a great segue into the video just devolving into chaos like it always does. I think in terms of accurately portraying the big earner, this actually hurt the video a bit, since the best way to play with 
it would be being unpredictable and swapping between the two playstyles where appropriate so that you can catch your opponents off guard. You know, when they expect you to be passive, you're more aggressive. When they expect you to be aggressive, you escape and slip away, etc. But I mean, hey, when has Man's Guide ever been an accurate, legitimate tutorial? I think from a video structure standpoint, this change was the right call and everything flowed way better. Well, off to die. This is also probably a good time to mention and thank all of the awesome people who helped with the various aspects of the episode. First and foremost, animators. I'm slowly but surely getting the very basics of SFM animation down, so much so that I even did a couple shots all by myself this time around. But as you've probably heard from Lazy Purple, that program is an absolute fucking hellscape, so I chose to enlist some help on that front for the more complicated stuff, specifically from these insanely talented folks. They all did a phenomenal job, and they even hid in some extra little jokes here and there. I won't spoil everything though, so you're just gonna have to go back and find the rest of your shelves. This next one is probably gonna get me made fun of in the comment section, but not all of this gameplay is actually mine. I know, I know, but here's the thing. KJ and Xenogene both really like using the big earner, and during the production of this video, they got some great clips that it would be really hard not to include in the final video. Gene is just a great spy overall, but KJ specifically has this weird aura about him that just makes everyone in the video game forget that he exists. Like, seriously, nobody looks at this guy, ever. See, look, it's the ultimate club. <laughs> Why do people not see you when you do that? That's not to say he's a bad spy, he's way better than me, but it's just so strange to watch his gameplay compared to actually playing spy and having everyone be hyper aware, plus your teammates blowing your cover so often that you're basically playing a 1v23 game. Yes, I'm still salty about this clip. Fucking Pyro, come on, man. Pyro, what the f I don't think I have a better way to demonstrate the KJ aura than this clip right here. In this one, we're both playing Big Earner Spy on the the same team, and I see KJ walk up and very obviously sap this sentry. The pyro's looking directly at him, pulls out the crit man melter, and I'm just like, okay, KJ is trying for a clip here, it's probably safe to go up and try something while they're distracted. But instead of going after the spy who just sapped their sentry and is about to stab one of their medics, this pyro just forgets he exists, randomly turns around and looks at me instead. I just... What? How? And to be fair, I stab the pyro and get away with three health, so it's a pretty decent clip. I just don't understand this man's power and how it works. I am very obviously jealous, but I appreciate the help nonetheless. And of course, there were various gameplay skits peppered throughout that I couldn't have done without the help of all these folks. These videos are always huge group efforts, and I'm super grateful that there are this many people excited to work on them. Real quick section, thumbnails. More perceptive viewers have probably noticed that all of the thumbnails so far reference a famous painting of some kind. The Force of Nature one was based on the creation of Adam, Beggars was based on the birth of Venus, and we decided on this one being based on Rembrandt's anatomy lesson basically as soon as we saw it. I don't know, like, it's, it's gotta be something with, like, a knife, right? Yeah. So, oh, like... Make more sense. How about the Golden Age? Hmm. So, like, stuff like this. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, we're done. We're done here. Music and sound design was another fun challenge in some parts. I guess the most obvious one to start with would be the intro. As you probably guessed, the intro was a near shot-for-shot -shot parody of the Cars 1 intro, but they use a licensed song for that. I was originally going to make a full parody of the song with lyrics and everything. Something like, I'm another spy man who thinks Kuna is like... Just dumb shit like that. But I decided against it in favor of making the ending where he walks out of spawn just sound like the Kick Kikpatowski intro. The All Eyes on You segment was also an instance of me doing a cover to avoid licensing issues. I wanted to use the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire soundtrack for the $64,000 question, but that always gets immediately slammed by the YouTube copyright bots. Luckily for me, it's a pretty simple track. You just get some low strings and then go kick, kick, heartbeat, kick, kick, heartbeat, etc, etc, etc. And then you just take a melody track that sounds like this shit and then you just make it play whatever you want. So I thought, what would be a good, iconic melody to use for a spy-centric scene? Oh, right! I'm also really happy with how the more sound designy elements in this sequence came out. It sounds pretty fucking cool. And I guess while we're on the subject, here's a few more of my favorite sound design bits.
I was thinking about hiding Head Pounder somewhere in that JoJo bit, but I decided against it. And this last one was made entirely from scratch, so if you don't mind, I'm gonna do a self-indulgent breakdown real quick. I could go on about the sound design all day, but in the interest of time, I'll only hit you with a few more really quick trivia bits. The gib and falling knife stab from the intro, like most gore sounds, was mostly made with various forms of food abuse. But one of my favorite layers in the whole thing is the sound of Cat squeezing excess water out of some pork dumpling filling that we made at some point while I was still working on the video. You can also hear our other housemate, Erin, in the background just, like, losing her shit over it. The reverb for the garage door banging in that car's intro extends too far and gets talked over by the guy going, Hey London, you ready? So I just had to record that myself and go bang on my actual garage door, which made my neighbors think I was fucking crazy. And finally, when the spy bangs his head on the desk after he fails at making a montage, there was no special technique or sound magic happening there. That's literally just the sound of me banging my head on the desk. And yes, it really hurt, but I have the sound now, so yay. Once again, thank you all so much for supporting this series. It means a lot to KJ and I. Truth be told, I feel like this was the best man's guide so far. I'm so proud of how it turned out. I don't want to use the word perfect, especially because anybody who's ever made anything knows that nothing you make is ever perfect to you. But I feel like I got pretty close with this. Oh, Ah. Yeah, keep healing me. Oh. Okay, sure. Huh? Okay, so this demo in the sewer still, so I'm gonna see if this soldier sets off my ringer, and I'm gonna try and get him to, like, turn around <laughs> and look at me instead of the people shooting at him. Ooh, look at me! Haha! Oh, you're just not even gonna- okay, cool, cool. Um... <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Got him. Like packing boxes in the world, packing mm -hmm. boxes in the world. Oh, you know what? We go in. <laughs> One health. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, there's a sentry outside their spawn. Cool. Uh, uh, look at the sentry. Look at the sentry. Okay, thank you. <laughs> oh, I didn't die. <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, I don't what? know. I don't what? know. <laughs> don't question it. <laughs> Uber time, baby. Oh. oh, my man ran out of mouse pad. This is embarrassing. Oh, oh, oh I'm going to trick stab you. you. I'm going to trick stab you. Oh. <laughs> That's fine! That's why I'm saying I... I... And I am just adding to the conversation by saying that I am not going to play it. You right. can do whatever the fuck you want. I can. I, I didn't I think can. I, I can. I can. I can. I'm so smart. I'm so wise. I'm Xenogene. I play Spy. My brain is huge. That's what I'm sound like right now. Oh, I... I... Oh, I... Oh, he I, fucking butter knife me. What did I take damage <laughs> from? I can't believe you would do this to me. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna fucking go back to spawn. I need to switch to Uber. Oh, that's a spy. The enemy. Get spy. Fucking, fucking troll, guys. idiot! <laughs> you motherfucker! <laughs> <Hello>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. I just spammed WASD, pressed left click, and hoped for the best. <laughs> and it worked! <laughs> I'm the sniper! Oh, yeah, I'm dead. My med left me alone to die. Ooh, yo! Did you see that? Nope. <laughs> This is way harder than it has any right to be, man. No! Ugh. I got random crit by the thing. Yeah, this is this is a frustrating clip to get. Uh, fuck you, KJ. Oh, I got oh, it! Man. What? I got it. You got it? That's it? I got it. That's it. It's over. GG.
What? Uh, I don't really know what happened there. <laughs> like he had Uber where it pushed up to uh, like their spawn, right? And I'm holding the door. I'm like, pop, pop. And he didn't. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? What's the problem? <laughs> that was good. You almost got him. No, I did. I got him and then immediately died. <laughs> that poor guy just edge bugged into me. <laughs> He's angry. from the point. <laughs> Is he AFK? Save me from the headshot. That was perfect. Oh my god. That was pretty good. <laughs> oh! Dude, please don't look at me. <laughs> don't look at me. It's in your uh, eyes. Wait, wait, wait. I'm such a god. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> just, just don't question it. Just don't question it. Okay. Wait, you think rockets are gonna stop us? <laughs> okay, we leave. Uh, okay, I'm out. <laughs> Sigma knows about the grind. Though. Kill him. Get, Get him. Get his Get ass. No, no, please. please. It's a drive-by. <laughs> uh, I'm getting run down in the middle of the street. You know those LA gangs. You know they're really. <laughs> <laughs> Guys. When... We're going, the... we're going, we're going to kill you. We have oh more God, numbers. Please, no. Where are the bloods? <laughs> Sorry, I have a big runner. Oh, God! Gangs. <laughs> we're having a gang. Hey! Okay, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> 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 I'm just in the background. Maze just on a scooter way behind everybody else. <laughs>